Hey, everyone. We're going to be working with some gross, nasty stuff today. Um, join me as we test botanicals in Melt and Pour Soap. It's results day, and yep, you see it. If you read it up there at the top, I am disappointed. Um, things did happen, so there's definitely much to discuss, but uh, they weren't as cut and dry clear as I thought they would be. So that's what I get for assuming, and that's why I was testing, because many of us assume, and there's still a, a lot to be discussed about this and tested, too. I'm going to do further testing down the road, but there are results, and they definitely are interesting, and some of them are gross. So stick with me, and let's, um, let's play <laughs> or, or not play. I am no scientist. I'm not an expert in that field. I ordered a kit from a professional cosmetics company, and it is a kit that uh, tests microbial uh, results for cosmetic products. Um, I will put the link in my description box. It is a kit from Lotion Crafter, which is a fabulous company that um, really has wonderful professional cosmetic ingredients for your skincare, face care products, etc. And uh, that's where I got the kit. It wasn't outrageous. I can't remember blah, I can't remember the exact price, but I believe it was under forty dollars and you get 10 test kits with it. Um, I'm kind of what you're seeing up at the top, not at the top, but it, what you're seeing on the screen basically is just a refresher. These are soaps I made a few weeks ago. Um, and I really recommend that you go back and watch those before you watch this video. So if you did not see me make these botanical soaps, please go do that. One or both of those will be linked uh, to this video. Definitely one will be linked in the description box and one will be linked at the end. So you just might have to look two places to find them, but they are connected. So they shouldn't be too difficult to find. Um, they both say botanicals and will, will it rot? That's my theme for this. Will it rot? And yes, some things were rotting. So we're going to look at some slides, some test slides too. I'm getting out the kit right now, as you might see. And that is a very well uh, packaged kit. Um, and you will find it is important to make sure you purchase a well packaged kit. And when you get it, Keep it safe and packaged until you're ready to use it in, uh, you know, cool, dry conditions, dark conditions. Um, I think it can go up to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but um, basically you don't want to let it sit out on your porch or something. So uh, I'm opening this, as you see on the screen, I'm opening it for this video uh, for the very first time. So I did not know what I was getting into until I opened the box. It was basically an unboxing at the same time as I'm testing. The little card there, I, do, I don't think, I do show it close up at the end. Please stick around for the pictures at the end because there are a lot of them and they are very significant to the results of this test. Um, there's a lot, like I said, a lot to unpack. So as, um, as I'm unpacking the kit, you see a couple of little um, test vials and those have the agar or agar i do not know which is correct but i tend toward agar it's been a long time since high school biology too thanks a lot ms norton you were fabulous um but i can't hear her voice saying it one way or the other so i'm saying agar anyway that is a medium that is put in it's what you usually see in petri dishes and it is a growth material. It is food for your bacteria. It's food for mold and yeast. And the reason you see two colors there is because each little slide, they call it a slide, is covered in a different agar. Agar. I'm going to say agar. Um, it's covered in a different type. So one is intended to grow um, to feed your bacteria and I believe fungi and other types of microbi uh, microbials will grow in that. The other side is geared more toward yeasts and molds. 
So that is, you can have crossover with that, but that's basically um, what it encourages the growth of. So the reason these tests work is because you're taking tiny things that you cannot see and encouraging them to grow on purpose so you know that they're there. Is there anything there? How much is there is what determines if something is harmful or not. There um, will likely be um, some results and some might look like nothing's there or barely anything's there. Um, but some are expected. They're, they're, um, I believe when I show you the picture at the end that... Um, that shows the the uh, card that you kind of guess, not guess, but compare it to, comparison card. You'll see it's, I think it's a thousand parts, a thousand colonies uh, per so many somethings. I don't know what, uh, but um, that is what is allowed. That is what is allowed in the U.S. in your products. Does it mean that's what you're going for and you want? No, of course not but that is an acceptable amount of something because you're you're growing it exponentially here. You're not actually going to find that in your product. You're not trying to feed it within your product. I hope that makes some sense. So all you see me doing here is labeling and swabbing. I swabbed first. You swab each side with the same product and you can dip if it's a liquid. This is a semi-solid. So like a cream or a lotion, you would swab it and wipe it onto the surface. And that is what I did on both sides using a new swab each time. These swabs are sterile and they come with the kit. So um, you get 10 little packs of, of swabs. So you have, you can do each side with a separate swab. So that is the first soap that I did, which is the kit that I got from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It is a bath tea guest soap kit. Um, it's It was very well packaged. It's a lovely kit um, with the exception of the possibility of mold <laughs> and some types of growth, which we'll talk about later what we can actually see with our eyes on the soap versus what we see in the, in the vials and on the slides. But uh, that first soap is the one using that kit. I have to say their bath tea smells wonderful, but I'm not sure I would ever put it in the soap again after this. Um, but I followed the instructions exactly. You may see some strings in those pictures because uh, the directions had me put them in the muslin bags that it, that the kit came with. Um, their, their hope was to use those botanicals without them going down the drain. And it would definitely do, I believe, would hold up to that. But... Um, back to the other soap, which you see me swabbing right now. That is my version of the kit. I wanted to test some different botanicals and see um, see what became of those. So I had, um, I, I listed all of these in the original videos. So like, uh, like I said earlier, you want to go back and see those. But this one is basically blue cornflower, calendula, and um, apricot seed powder. Um, so you have uh, a variety of things that are all supposed to be safe. So we'll see what happens with the growth of these. And I'm swabbing the soap at different areas for each side just because I wanted to not contaminate with the swab. Um, so I'm doing the yellow side with one and the pink with another. Close it up. They close up very tightly. Uh, it doesn't screw shut. It just pops, kind of pops in there. They're a little difficult to open, which is a good thing. If they were too easy to open, I'd suspect that air had gotten in. Uh, but they're they're pretty darn airtight. Um, as I'm doing these, I'm using the ones that I put in the little bags that you do see at the end of each video that I made. I put them in uh, the muslin bags and then some little, um, organza bags for mine, the ones that I made with the calendula and the blue cornflower and the apricot seed powder. So that's the two different types of soap. They are now in the, the test files have now been, um, up the, it's been, soap has been applied to it and to each side. 
and they have been labeled because I want to be very careful not to get them mixed up. And so I labeled one botanical one and the other one botanical two. Uh, botanical one is wholesale supplies plus botanical two is my own mix. And we will see, as you will see here, I'm going to then let them sit. They've already, I let them sit for two weeks before I did any testing because I wanted to, um, to show you a, a lot of people say, well, I didn't have anything grow and they, you know, they used it like a day or two after you have to give it a little bit time before you see some icky stuff. So this is 48 hours. Now you give it an incubation period. Once you've put the, the soap or the product on the slides, you wait 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours. I recommend 48 hours. If you are not using an actual incubator, which I did not room temperature, you go for the longer of the, of the times suggested. So we did 48 hours after, and we had a couple of little colonies on each, on each side and each, um, specimen. So, um, a couple of little colonies is definitely less than a thousand and definitely less than a thousand, um, millimeters uh, or milliliters, depending on what you're measuring. And it, so they're definitely, according to these, they're considered safe. Now I have some thoughts on this and we'll talk as you, as I start showing some more of the product as it ages. Um, some of it does not age gracefully. Um, and, uh, but they, but just to be clear, they all come up with some microbes on each side. So Yeast, mold, bacteria, something. It's it's in, even if it means one tiny little speck of it that was then fed and bred into a colony. That's what happens um, with these. That is what was there. Yes, your soap will have mold, bacteria, et cetera, on it when you're using it, Your own, any soap with, with botanicals or not. It's going to have bacteria from your hands. It is soap that kills that bacteria and sends it down the drain. And it doesn't kill it like an antibacterial product would. It, de it detaches it so it is not going to stick to you and it wash that's what helps wash it off. Um, I won't get into real specifics of that because again, I am not a bacteria expert and I'm not a scientist, I am just a soap maker. Um, but I'm showing you these two because they're starting to look a little gross. And some people will say, oh, well, they just, the, the botanicals just turn brown. Um, yes, they do turn brown, but there's more to it. And you'll see more of that in the close-ups. I'm, I was kind of, when I said I was disappointed, I was disappointed that there wasn't more of a reaction to some of these. I was kind of pleased on the ones that I made myself, but, um, but, you know, the, it still had something that grew, so I can't be all puffy about that. Uh, didn't get anything uh, crazy, and uh, neither did the one from Wholesale Supplies Plus on the tests. My thought is, though, you're rubbing soap on it. So I'm not actually sure how you would test for soap without getting the soap benefit of it killing or or reducing inhibiting that bacteria somehow. So I don't, I don't even know how to answer that one. Um, it's just, it is what it is. You see what grows. You will see a little better. I know it's really, really hard to see in the video, but the pictures, I enlarge them and I sharpen them quite a bit so you can actually see what's there. And I circle the little colonies that I found. Um, I did have to really enlarge some of that to find them. Um, the little plus marks you see on the slides. Those are part of how the slides are made. Those are contact points with the agar. They are not a part of, they're not bacteria or colonies. They help you to kind of count the colonies. If you see a bunch, it helps you to kind of keep track of them. So that's what they're there for. And um, they don't mean anything. So you look kind of around the little plus marks, away from the plus marks. Don't count those. You might I'm not sure if you're able to see them now, but you will be able to see them in the pictures toward the end. So I don't, I'm not 
positive how to move forward from here, but I do know I'm going to continue to test some things. I would like to test some extracts in soap and some powders in soap and some other things just to see what happens because that's what I like to do. I like to experiment and see what goes wrong, what goes right, what maybe is still questionable. Because I have to say, um, looking at how the soaps change as you go, here's the first day. This That means that's the day I made the soap. This actually isn't quite the first day. It's the week later because I, I cut the soap a week later. But still, this is the first before anything has been um, tested, etc. And um, again, a week later with this one, but a first day with the other soaps. Now we have the two-week results. This is when it starts getting kind of ugly. Um, both of the soaps that I put in the external, the open bags, are... Um, you know, have glycerin do, and it just does. But, um, and the ones with glycerin do look a little worse off than the others. But um, definitely the ones, the Wholesale Supplies Plus one with, the, and I'm not trying to diss them in any way, my favorite company. So um, I'm just trying to show you what happens with botanicals. In Melton and Pour Soap, um, I also want to point out that all of these tests were done dry meaning there is no added liquid to that other than the agar feeding the bacteria. And I know that um, soap, when it gets wet, those botanicals are going to get wet and it's going to cause this kind of thing. So that 48-hour incubation thing that you saw with me pointing with the arrow, that was the uh, number of colonies, what it looks like when you have the uh, thousand parts. So we're getting grosser and grosser as we go. And my thought on this, my biggest takeaway, if you take away any from anything from this, look at the soaps and in particular, look at the ones that look kind of gooey. I don't know if you can see that. There is a gel forming on that soap um, that on the top of the one with the um, juniper berries. That is, it is so gross looking. I don't even know if I could capture it. Um, I did see a couple of spots in mine. See, there's the gel. Oh, I would not use that if you paid me a million bucks. Well, maybe, maybe a million. If somebody wants to pay me a million to use that, I probably would. But look, I don't know if you can see how gross that looks, but um, I'm guessing you can. The string, again, is just from the muslin bag, and you do see quite a bit of glycerin dew on those. Um, but you see more and more little colonies growing and that's what it's supposed to do none of it ever gets to a point that is um considered harmful so that's that's that but i still wouldn't use those <laughs> um i i it's too gross for me so i might use the ones that i made there was one spot in one of them that made me look questionable or made me think it was questionable and i may try these again without the blue corn flour. These are examples you sent me of some other fun and gross soaps that again, I would not use if you paid me. So think hard about uh, using botanicals before you do. Do some testing, do some research, and come back soon because we're gonna do more. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.